Little Al will weave all over the straightaway, trying to keep Scott Goodyear away. Well, it certainly is, and keep in mind another thing. They have a race gear, a real fast gear, and a cruise gear. Both of these guys are letting all the saving go to the wind now. It's in the go gear right now. And Scott Goodyear closes in behind Al Hunter Jr. Remember, Big Al runs in third place right now. The battle, though, is at the front of the field. For what is happening to Scott Goodyear right now, this is incredible. After years of relative obscurity, trying to set his career up to do the right things, suddenly he finds himself with a moment where it could all come right in the biggest possible way. He's got the opportunity on the plate. The strategy right now, for example, is just flat out. There is nothing being saved right now because, remember, Little Al is making dirty air or hard air for Scott Goodyear to run in, and leading right now, running in that clean air, is definitely an advantage. This is not a NASCAR race situation where it would be to some advantage for Scott Goodyear to stay in second place. He's not in a position to save fuel. I think if he can make the pass, he's going to make the pass. Buddy, I, I think little Al at this point may be just sheer finding more turn speed, Bobby. And what he's going to do is he can fine-tune the track because he has nobody's dirty air to run in. He can set and fine-tune. He'll be running the track in inches in different places then to try to figure out the fastest place. And he uses his mirrors behind him, seeing where Scott is, to see whether he's gaining or losing. Scott Goodyear tries to keep out in clean air so he can keep his radiators cool on the car, keep the engine cool. They're turning the laps to 223, almost 224 miles an hour. 196 laps are complete. Little Al told me a week ago, he says, I'm going to have to run the last laps around 225. He darn it, that isn't pretty close, Paul. Neither car in contest at the moment. Scott Goodyear trying desperately to make up the distance. He's inching up on Al Hunter Jr. And Scott Goodyear is now right there, right behind Little Al. He follows Little Al down the main straightaway. Anywhere Little Al goes, there is Scott as well. And further, when you weave back and forth like that, you scrub off a little bit of speed too, but Scott has no, no nothing he can do except to follow him because he needs the drafting. Scott Goodyear, of course, a Canadian early in his career. You see him setting up Little Al now. He seemed to kind of give you the feeling that things were coming easily for him. Then he had a long period there, two, three years, where he just couldn't get any result at all. Suddenly, he's vaulted back to this moment. He can see the possibility of winning the Indy 500 if he can make one pass. But he has got to pass one of the savviest, canniest, and most determined drivers in the business. A lot of that's going to come from the old sprint car days. That's where Little Al came from, was go-karts and sprint cars. He's got a lot of savvy on how to keep somebody from passing. The 198th lap in the record book. On this lap in 1989, Emerson Fittipaldi and Little Al touched wheels. Little Al hit the wall. Fittipaldi went on to the west. Scott Goodyear is still trying to catch him. Right now, there's no traffic involved in front of the ball. This is what got him the last time. And Al Unser Jr. sees Dwayne Sweeney's white flag. Two and a half miles. One more lap to go. If Scott Goodyear has a chance, the time is now. Don't forget, ten years ago, John Cox and Rick Mears raced on the last lap for the finish. John Cox won that one. That was experience over Rick Mears' relative inexperience. Will that happen again here today? They're on the back stretch. 223 miles an hour on the last lap. No traffic involved. They make the turn for home now. On the main stretch, Scott Goodyear closes in. He looks for a place to come by. Scott Goodyear tries it, but no. I believe that's the closest finish in Indy history. Closer than the race 10 years ago when Gordon Dark, John Cox beat Rick Mears. 10 years ago when Little Al was new to this track. And now, Al Jr. is a winner at the Indianapolis 500. That was the most fabulous finish I've ever seen. I've never seen anybody try any harder than Scott Goodyear did or Little Al. They zigzagged all over the racetrack, did everything they could, 
to mess each other up or whatever that you try to do. Scott Goodyear pulls alongside and salutes the new winner. Remember, though, Scott has nothing to be ashamed of. Let's go to Jerry Punt. We're, we're with Rick Gallus, and Rick, congratulations on an outstanding effort today. Well, oh, my guys, and I'll tell you, Al Jr.'s got a lot of, he got the heart of an elephant. It was funny, nobody talked about us all month. And this race team, just they just keep getting after it and getting after it. And we're not big talkers, but I, I'm really proud. Man, this feels good, Jerry. Hey, good things happen to good people. After qualifying, this has to make up for all the disappointments. We just worked hard all month by engineers. The new Galmer, I think it'll. I think uh, Rob Miller said that it wasn't too good on ovals, and we just, uh, we're real proud to be here. The winning car owner for the Indianapolis. I want to say to all the people in New Mexico, because this was a win for New Mexico as well. Rick Gallus, the winning car owner here at Indianapolis 500. Here were the last few hundred feet of the run as Scott Goodyear looked for a place to get past. Came out to the inside. And as they came to the line, Scott Goodyear had a little bit of a roll, but it wasn't enough. But look at that. Had his front wheels up with little Al's rear wheel. I'll tell you what, he got the USAC scoring computer because the computer says the interval first to second was point zero. <laughs> Al Enzer Jr. from his onboard camera has taken the 76 running of the Indianapolis 500. Little Al's first win. On a plane not so long ago, little Al confided to me he was worried that he might never win this race. Like great masters, like Ted Horn. And he sacks. And it was close. By the time they got to the first turn, look at this from high over the starter. There's the interval. That is the first time in Indy history that two cars have actually finished abreast of each other. The closest finish in history.